Senator Cruz from the Rules Committee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you to each of the witnesses for being here. Thank you for your service helping keep this country safe. As we look back on the terror attack that played out in the Capitol on January 6, uh, it is apparent that far more should have been done to keep the Capitol safe and to stop the attack beforehand. There were multiple factors that led to that not being done and to there not being a sufficient law enforcement presence to prevent violent criminals from carrying out that terror attack. On January 5th, the day before the attack, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser sent out a tweet. That tweet read, to be clear, the District of Columbia is not requesting other federal law enforcement personnel and discourages any additional deployment without immediate notification to and consultation with MPD if such plans are underway. And the tweet that she sent attached a letter that she sent to the Department of Justice and the Department of Defense. That letter in turn read as follows. As the law enforcement agency charged with protecting residents and visitors throughout the District of Columbia, the Metropolitan Police Department is prepared for this week's First Amendment activities. MPD has coordinated with its federal partners, namely the U.S. Park Police, U.S. Capitol Police, and U.S. Secret Service, all of whom regularly have uniformed personnel protecting federal assets in the District of Columbia. This week, MPD has additional logistical support of unarmed members of the D.C. National Guard who will work at the direction of and in coordination with MPD. The District of Columbia government has not requested personnel from any other federal law enforcement agencies. To avoid confusion, we ask that any request for additional assistance be coordinated using the same process and procedures. We are mindful that in 2020, MPD was expected to perform the demanding tasks of policing large crowds while working around unidentifiable personnel deployed in the District of Columbia without proper coordination. Unidentifiable personnel, in many cases armed, caused confusion among residents and visitors and could become a national security threat in no way for MPD and federal law enforcement to decipher armed groups. To be clear, the District of Columbia is not requesting other federal law enforcement personnel and discourages any additional deployment without immediate notification to and consultation with MPD if such plans are underway. The protections of persons and property is our utmost concern and responsibility. MPD is well trained and prepared to lead the law enforcement coordination and response to allow for the peaceful demonstration of First Amendment rights in the District of Columbia. Signed, Muriel B Bowser, Mayor. So in hindsight, that letter seems incredibly ill-advised. Now, hindsight is always 2020, but to what extent did the District of Columbia's explicitly asking for no additional federal personnel impact the decision making of your respective agencies? Senator, uh, I'll go first. Um, in my oral statement this morning, I, I mentioned that letter because it did. It was a communications that they were looking for no more support. On, on top of that, Senator, uh, we also contacted all the federal law, uh, law enforcement organizations, Secret Service, Park Police, Marshals, FBI, and Capitol Police over the weekend of the 2nd and 3rd of January just to make sure that the Department of Defense, if additional support was going to be needed, that we would obviously provide that support. We did that over the weekend. Then we received that letter on the 5th. And based on that, it was clear that there was no additional support needed for our law enforcement partners or the, or the city, the district run. Well, let me follow up on that, Mr. Salasis. Uh, Mr. Sund, who testified before the Senate last week, said that he had requested the support of the D.C. National Guard on January 6th, but that the Army Secretary denied his request, saying, quote, I don't like the visual of the National Guard standing aligned with the Capitol in the background. Uh, is, is that accurate? Senator, I'm not aware of the Secretary of the Army uh, talking to Gen uh, Chief Sun 
about the D.C. National Guard in the Capitol. It's been reported by others that there were other folks that made that um, contention to, to the D.C., I mean, the, the Capitol Police, but I'm not aware of the Secretary of Army doing that. In fact, nobody in the chain of command disapproved the request on the 6th of January from the Capitol Police. Nobody disapproved it. So the various authorizing memoranda from January 4th and January 5th, 5th suggest that the National Guard was significantly restricted on the 6th. Uh, while Ryan McCarthy, the former Secretary of the Army, approved the D.C. National Guard to support MPD in some ways, he expressly withheld authority to employ the quick reaction force, and he lacked authority to, to authorize the issuance of weapons and riot gear, among other things. Could you please explain what you understand to be the restrictions placed on the Guard? Senator, again, uh, there's a very strict chain of command for the D.C. National Guard. It runs from the Secretary of Defense to the Secretary of the Army to the D.C. Guard Commanding General, General Walker. Any time the military is going to deploy to civil defense, the civil disturbance operations, it requires the Secretary of Defense's approval. The memos that were published on the 4th of January and respectively on the 5th of January those were to provide additional guidance to, number one, the, the memo on the 4th from the Secretary of Defense to the Secretary of the Army. He wanted to make decisions if the National Guard was going to be employed in any kind of operation that required helicopters, bayonets, the things that are on the, on the letter. Subsequently, the Secretary of the Army published the memo on the 5th stating that this is how he expected the D.C. National Guard to be employed at the traffic stops, the metro stations, and if the QRF that was positioned at Andrews Air Force Base was going to be used, he wanted to understand exactly how that was going to be used through a concept of operations. That's what those documents did. And General Walker, could you answer the same question, and, and in particular, whether you had the authority to employ a quick reaction force prior to the January 6th, and would that have potentially made a difference on January 6th if, if you had been able to do so? So, uh, Senator Cruz. Senator Cruz, I, I would have had that authority prior to January 6th to employ, direct a quick reaction force. So the Secretary of Defense, his letter authorizes me to use the quick reaction force, and it says only as a last resort, where the Secretary of the Army his, his direction to me uh, withholds the authority to use the quick reaction force, and he will only authorize that and only after he has a concept of operations sent to him, uh, a CONOP sent to him. So, so that was restriction that was unusual to me. I had never seen that before. Uh, and, Madam Chair, I would ask unanimous consent that both the tweet and the letter from D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser be entered into the record. Without objection, it Thank will you. be entered in the record. Well, I think the